this is the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet map. And this is the Pokemon Scarlet and Violet map with all the Pokemon in it. I went through all of the Pokemon trailers and the Pokemon official websites to find out all this information and place them on the map so you can decide what Pokemon you're going to find on your adventure in the Paldea region. Okay, so we are going to start our journey in this home. And I know this is going to almost feel like, how do you know this whole game? Because you pieced everything together. And in this room, you can see an Applin, a Driftbloom, and a Hatina. Anytime you see something, it will show up in the game somewhere. So nothing is a hidden clue. If it's there, you can visually see it. It's going to be in the game. As your player exits the house and heads towards the professor's home, you're going to see a guy that talks about signs here in this screenshot. And if you pay attention to the sign over here, you can see that this is where a Meowth is walking. It's the exact same sign. So you know that you're going to bump into Meowth early in the game. Now, Meowth could be a nighttime Pokemon. So be aware that it could be time of day when certain Pokemon show up or different weather. But I'm just grouping them all in the area so you have that awareness. Going forward, you're going to probably head to the professor's home. You're going to pick your starter. You got your grass, fire, water. You decide which one you want. From the professor's house, you're going to go to the beach and you're going to find a Miraidon and Koraidon. And most likely, this is a cutscene where you're first introduced to them, but you probably will not be able to ride them until you reach the main city of the game. Now, going forward, we mentioned Meowth already, and Meowth obviously will evolve into a Persian, so we decided to throw Persian on the map, so you know you got that normal Pokemon. You'll notice that throughout this area, you'll also bump into a lot of Pokemon that are little tiny flowers that are pretty hard to miss. But Bebe is a Fairy-type Pokemon, so you get a Fairy-type pretty early in the game that you have access to. Now, if you look over to the right of this area, you can see this little palm tree and an overlook area. If we move forward you can see that we're going to start bumping into things like lechonk which are everywhere on this opening route but we decided to throw lechonk just a little further in on the map so we have bone suites and we have patili i decided to also throw their evolutions on the map these two are together in the screenshot i threw in pichu because pichu is listed on the japanese website as you can see in this image here and a lot of the footage in the first area shows that you have a Pikachu early on. So most likely there's gonna be wild Pikachus along with Pichus. We also have Palmy on this map and Palmy is most likely gonna be caught early because you're going to be battling someone with Palmy. So you're probably going to be getting this Pokemon early on as well. Now, this is really interesting. If you look at this picture, it is a Teddy Ursa fighting an Eevee. This is really cool. Having them in battle only means one thing when it's in the first area. These Pokemon are most likely going to be here. In this first area now whether teddy ursa can become ursa ring and then become ursa luna which is the new form from legends arceus that is a question totally up to debate now for those people interested in eevee because eevee was shown in this first area that means you can probably catch a bunch and eventually evolve them to a whole team of evolution so if you're looking for a sick evolution team with this eevee this is the spot to go to get that eevee if you look at this lighthouse over here which is really obvious on the map this lighthouse is red each lighthouse has a different color now this one is red and right at the first trailer of this game when they revealed the game they showed you a magneton and magneton means you have access to an electric steel pokemon early and you can work your way all the way up to a magna zone by catching magneton which is why i listed the evolutions out there we also have images of bronzor and bronzong in the early areas which is really good to know because they also drop metal coat and this is a steel psychic pokemon so the game is giving you access to a lot of different typings uh, you can see on the left we also decided to add the whole entire hatterene evolution line but from the later footage of hatterene it shows it fully evolved so most likely you're going to find the baby pokemon in this area or starting or beginning area and you're going to evolve your way up there another very popular pokemon you're going to find in the starting area that you're probably going to get annoyed of is hop if this thing is everywhere so if you're looking for a grass type pokemon here it is the reason we added pseudo wudo's pre-evolution is because there was a trailer with wiglet fighting it and they decided to show footage of a wild bonsley in this area so that's why we put that here in the starting area so you have access to this little rock Pokemon here from the start based off the trailer. Now, you're probably looking funny at this map and wondering why is there a Gardevoir evolution line in this area? And the reason why we know that the Gardevoir evolutionary line is at the beginning is because when you arrive at this town over here, you're going to see a middle stage evolution of the Gardevoir line just sitting here which means you probably caught the pre-evolution early, which means you can have a Gardevoir on your team very early on in the game. Now, at this mini town, by this image, we have it during the daytime, we have it during the nighttime. You can see that there are also Fletchinders here, which is going to be your fire-type bird. 
we can see that there are images of the Vivillion line. These are also found early on on the route. We just decided to put them to fill out the map just so it feels a little more lively. Uh, we also have a Jigglypuff that was listed here. You can see that in this picture. It's not the highest quality, but this was on the Japanese website. So you can assume that you're going to have the full evolution line somewhere here. We also have small of here because it was shown in the starter area. So we added that to the map. And we also decided to throw in the whole entire Blissey evolutionary line because most of the Pokemon shown off in the city are going to be in the starter area. So this was just the main straight path of all the Pokemon that we see. But if we move to the right side of the first area, yeah, there's a lot more to this game than you think there is. This area over here, we have a Driftlim and a Drift Bloom. We have a Combi and a Vespa Queen. You can see in this image that they group the Drift Limbs and the Combis together. You can also see that we have a Sableye here. Yes, you heard me right. A Sableye. The Pokemon company has shown this image off on the Japanese website. This is Sableye. Nothing here is leaked. As you can see to the right over here, we have a Drowsy and a Hypno. Now, the reason you can see this Drowsy here is because of all these structures. And how do we know these structures are in the first area? Take a look at this image of the first area on a different angle. You see those structures there? That is why we have placed Drowsy in the first area. So another access to Psychic Pokemon, which is really cool. You go further, you can see Venonat, and we've decided to put its evolution over here. You can see them jumping around, and they're at the edge of an area. That's why we put that there. In our previous video where we talked about secret footage of Pokemon, I'm not going to show this exactly, but if you want to watch it, you can go to the video at the end of this video. We broke down why we're going to have our Zongoose, our Viper, our Psyduck, Meryl, and Luxio on this area. This swamp area is kind of a big deal because there was a lot of images of it here. You can see there's a Dreadnought. The Choodles were shown to be on Route 1, and Choodles are the pre-evolution of Dreadnought. You can also see that the new form of Whoopers are here. And this image, you can see Goomies are here, and they have a little image of Psyducks here. You have your pick of your team just alone on the swamp area. Over here, we have a Saw's Buck, and in this image, you can see that it's very close to the canyon area, and it almost looks like you have to go through the canyon area to come to this higher route here, because there's no other areas on the smaller part of this map where you can climb, so you might have to go around, but we'll get to that later. You can also see that we have another Pokemon, uh, a Swablu and an Altaria. Yes, another Dragon Pokemon early game. How do we know this is in the first area? Well, you can see that there is a Pikachu fighting it in this image. And in the top left corner of this picture, you can actually see the lighthouse right there. That is the red one on this screen here, aiming down from the top of this hill. So you now know that you can get level 23 Pokemon at the higher parts of this because of this. So you know, as you go higher up this hill, you're going to find higher level Pokemon. As you stay in the main area, there's going to be lower level Pokemon, which means it probably needs a new access point or you need the Maridon and Koridon mounts to do this. You probably saw the Gengars I was scrolling and you're like, where the heck is this Gengar? They probably are placing high level Pokemon on this map because here is the image of the Gengar. It is the nighttime version of this area. And it's very obvious that it looks like it is part of the first area. So they probably have really strong Pokemon just hiding about. Over here, looking at this Honch, Crow, and Murkrow looking over the edge of the water, we threw in them at this edge of the map. Now, I could be wrong. There could be other borders of the game that could have them. It does look a lot like Area 1, and it does look like Pokemon is spilling as much as they can about the first area to give away a lot of the game. Here's an image of Flaffy also in Area 1. Now, if we move all the way to the left of this map, I put Gudra next to Meryl in this spot. If you see this image here, it looks like they're at a higher point, and you can see the waterfall flowing in front of them and they're at a flat water stand but it seems like if you're gonna find a wild gudra it's going to be harder to get this fully evolved dragon so i'm assuming it's going to be at a higher vantage point and it's going to be a much higher level now you know the first area of the game and we're going to proceed into this castle area which is going to bring you to the main town now in the main town they have blissey line you can see swab blues you can find rotoms on the power lines in the main area something interesting about the main town is that there is a little cave entrance over here and in this image with this houndoom you can see it's a very low level houndoom and this might be the spot where you get to test out terrestrializing for the first time and where you get to experiment with it it's probably going to be in this cave and after that you're probably going to be able to terrestrialize everywhere you go in the game now if you go to the right of the city we are introduced into a canyon looking area that is extremely orange as indicated by these screenshots you're going to bump into a cloth in this area, which is a rock type Pokemon. So there are a lot of cloths here as indicated by 
a lot of the game footage that we have seen as well uh they're also going to bump into luxio luxray which is an electric typing so it's pretty cool to grab this electric pokemon here it's also in area one as well you're gonna bump into hound doors and hound dooms as shown off in the trailers as well and i've also decided to throw in a rock rough here the reason we threw rock rough here is because it's in the main town probably would be good in this area and depending on the time of day you have access to its forms the day form the midday form and the night form depending on when you come to this area it also is really similar to the area you've been to to catch them in pokemon sword and shield we have a survivor here crawling away from the canyon area going into this area as you can see we go further back i added a torkoal because we will see later on that a team star member uses it and i figured if you're gonna get a fire type early on in the game it's gotta be in the fire area of the game and something cool i just wanted to point out to you guys if you look at this hill over here looking down towards the town you can see a really sick shot of armor rouge just looking over and the reason we didn't add armor rouge as a wild pokemon is because it most likely has a pre-evolution that is going to be determined of which one it's going to be depending on the version of the game so this is just an interesting shot just to establish the area a little bit for you if you look to the left of the city we are introduced into another area it almost looks like a farmland kind of closed off area we have images of fido crawling around over here we have diglets and dug trios which i've talked about in our previous video we have greed nut and its previous evolution in this area as well and by the way greed nut is also shown on this image here with gita pretty cool to look at we've also added the ampharos evolution line here it's very specific on what the grass looks like it's very light 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 brown and you see these little wheat lines here and that kind of determines the area that you're in and so we also have small lives shown off in this area you can see the windmills in the distance in this screenshot uh, you might see an ori Corio form that i've personally added in here because if we go to our next area after this you will be seeing the first ori Corio. now continuing from the canyon area which is a further to the right you do bump into a pit stop where there are trainers riding cyclizers and just resting as you can see in this screenshot over here they're chilling right outside the grass town in the grassy town where you're going to be able to fight the grass gym leader you're going to see sun floras and sun kerns. There's also this image with Gita where you can see sun kern on the floor. So these will most likely be in that area. The gym leader of the grass type area was also shown to have a pseudo wudo. So most likely you'll find pseudo wudos around this area. And if you don't, you now know that you can get them from the first area based off the gameplay footage. You can see that we have a Makuhita and an Ori Koryo. And the reason these are both here before this team star area, which is indicated by these flags and You've most likely seen them in the trailer. As you can see here, they are in the auto battle mode. And you have to be able to get these Pokemon before you reach the Team Star fight. So your trainer most likely picked them up right beforehand. If you move further to the right down over here, we added a Lucario and a Riolu looking over the water. Now, to establish the grass area, here are some screenshots. And you can see that it's open land. They've shown the water. It's just really grassy. You don't see many trees. And this Lucario screenshot, you can also see that there are no trees around it and just an open waterfront. Hence why we put Lucario and Riolu. We have a shot of Clauncher and Pelipper just hanging out on the beach over here. And I decided to put them right over here. This is the beach I thought, again, I could be wrong on the beach. It could be another beach. If I'm wrong and there will needs to be an update, we will update that. As we go further on, there is a town here. And if you scroll in on this gym battle area, you're going to see it's yellowish. And it makes me really feel that this is an electric type area because of the yellow beam in the screenshot based on the town and because they have little conduction spikes sticking out of the ground and hence why i decided to place some of these pokemon here and put pachirisu here which is an electric type pokemon we have thrown pinchurch in here which is also an electric type pokemon shown off in this screenshot here we added a voltorb and electrode and you might be wondering why in this gita screenshot you can see that there's a little red ball all next to this dreepy you can see venonat over here you can see a couple of other Pokemon that are interesting on these magazines. So keep in mind that most likely these are all Pokemon here. So this is why we added Voltorb and Electrop on this area. We were also shown that Electros does exist in this game. So it makes me really believe that there are going to be electric Pokemon in the water that is powering up this electric area. I like to call this the rocky area of the map. So let me just first off go over the assumption Pokemon before we get into the official ones. I threw an Onix and a Steelix on the map. The only reason why I did this is because if Metal Coat drops from Magneton and Bronzers, there's only two Pokemon that really benefit from that. Scyther into Caesar and Onix into Steelix 
Steelix. Now, we also threw in the Geodude line, which is not officially confirmed. And the reason why I put the Geodude line is because Scyther is confirmed to also be in this game. And if Scyther evolves into Cleaver, it's going to need a specific drop. In Legends Arceus, Graveler dropped an item specifically that was used to turn Scyther into Cleaver. Therefore, why well, I believe this line will also be in the game, and I put them in this area. Again, this is not a leak. This is just my personal opinion on mechanics that we've had before in Pokemon and why it would be important for them to show up again. Now, you can see we added Torkoal on this map. It's most likely that the Team Star leader here either picked it up before or after this area. So this is the only spot that I think it would make sense to be in. Now, I threw Tauros on the map because there is a kid who has Tauros on his shirt and nothing is accidental in this game. If it is shown, it is most likely in the game. Therefore, we throw Tauros here because of both fighting. And speaking of fighting, we were also shown a bunch of fighting Pokemon, including Medicham and Hariyama. And these were shown in these screenshots. So here's Medicham and here is Hariyama in the shot as well as its pre-evolution. Another Pokemon we threw on this map is Hydreigon. And you can see in these screenshots here, the trainer is actually using one at the third evolution to knock out this Hariyama. This is a nice big overview of the rocky area and you can see some cave entrances. And because of the cave entrances, we also have Colossal that is roaming around in the trailer. So we decided to throw the Colossal in the obvious area, the caves. And you can see this is a steaming rock area. Now on this map, you can see two unconfirmed Pokemon. You can see the Rhyperior evolution line and you can see Kangaskhan. You might be wondering, how do you know that these two are in the game because there's no actual screenshots? I present to you evidence of the Gen 1 Pokemon trainer. As you can see on his outfit, you have the Dragonite, the Gyarados, the Kangaskhan, and the Rhyhorn. There's no reason they would not put these Pokemon in the game because remember, people that are going to be playing this game for the first time ever in their lives. And if they have something that makes no sense to them, there's no point in putting it in the game. We also have Kuparaja and its pre-evolution. Uh, the pre-evolution is shown on this map and it's also in this screenshot. So we got a couple angles of that Pokemon as well. For some reason we also got fletching bird is freaking everywhere in this game i don't know why they just they decided to show it in every single biome almost there is a mud bray by this waterfall here it's a little dry grassy there's a waterfall there is a flag post here which indicates that this is another team star battle it is purple in color unlike the first area this signifies the fire type one most likely because it's evil team i'm going to lean towards poison and purple so if anything you have ground type pokemon and you take on a poison type team star you're probably winning but going further past here grafifi and the reason why we decided to put this here is because look at this weird ledge on the map and then look at this weird ledge in the screenshot here. You can also see that there are bodies of water here. You can see that there's a river flowing. And this kind of gives us the indication that, hey, this could possibly be the spot where Grafifi is. And then you can see that little pathway as well. It's way off the map. It's surrounded by these rocky areas. This actually might be the spot where you get it. Almost makes sense if this is a poison team star area, you're rewarded with getting a poison type Pokemon after you get through that area. Now going further to the right, there is Arcanines here. This is weird because if you look at this image, you can see spikes on the right side, just like there's spikes on the right side on this map. And on the left side, you can see the mountain path and the snow. If you look to the right area, it's a very spiky area. For some reason, they decided to close this off with clouds. There's some hidden stuff here that the Pokemon company does not want to show us, but you can see there's waterfalls, there's cave entrances, there's bamboo, there's dirt areas, very spiky rocks. But I have not seen anything in this area that signifies that there are Pokemon here that we're going to be getting. They're not showing this off, but if we do get an update, I will update this area of the map. Now, before we get into the snow area, let's head back to the left part part of our map which we left over before for some reason the pokemon trailers decided to show that you can get overworld evolutions and they decided to showcase another dragon pokemon noivern and noibat so they are being shown to evolve in this same similar area and it looks like it's open just like the fields we've talked about before now that i look at my map i'm pro i'm most likely incorrect about my arcanine placement but as you can see on this arcanine image there is a giant rock at the angle where it is facing but the grass almost looks just as dry as the noivern area it looks a little more greener so what i believe is this arcanine is facing this giant rock over here as we head towards this windmill area you can see that we have a bunch of starlies over here i'm so sick of seeing starlies we've seen this pokemon since brilliant diamond we see them in legends arceus and now they're over here you can see the windmills in the background as well and you can see there's a bunch of hop hips flying around in the images uh, we have giraffe rings almost looking like the same area as the arcanines but the camera angle is opposite because you can see that this giraffe ring is facing this peak this giant peak so if it's a sharp peak 
it's facing this way. If it's a flat, giant, big rock, it's most likely facing this thing. And yes, I added an Ori Corio randomly again because you know what? This area looks pink to me. So I decided to place a pink Ori Corio on the path close to it. By the way, fun fact, in this screenshot of the Starlies, over here, you can actually see this little dome in the left corner which is interesting it looks like some mind control kind of area so i don't know what gym it is here um but it is pink so it po maybe possibly psychic here's an image of scyther you can see that there's these little purple flower areas um so i decided to add scyther here obviously i put caesar here because they have shown caesar off in this image i have another shot of the players running up a bike hill and you can see these purple flowers are all here it looks super narrow on this map but it's huge when it comes to actually being a game and very wide caesar is because of metal coach which we said is dropped by magnemites and bronze on. We also have the cleaver evolution because, you know, Graveler might be dropping something that would give us our Hisuian form. Now, Applin most likely has these two evolutions in different games. Uh, so depending on Scarlet or Violet, most likely Flapple and Appleton will be in that specific game. You can see it facing a giant rock area. Again, if it's a big and round and bulky and not snowy, it's most likely this peak. And if it's triangle, it's this peak. So most likely we're looking at this from an angle far away from it. Now, this is really cool because this was shown super early in the game. Larvitar is in this screenshot by the lighthouses, which you can see over here. We got two angles for you to look at. And obviously your Larvitar is going to evolve into a Tyranitar. Now the game showed this trading screen where you are trading a Larvitar uh, with a Baggin, which means they are going to be in separate games, Scarlet and Violet. So my assumption of where you would get Bagon is pretty much in the exact same spot. I think that's going to replace the Larvitar. If anything, if the Larvitar's not there, they got to put something there. And my only assumption is the Bagon, which becomes Salamance and you have screenshots of it being there with the trainer as well now garchomp is not officially confirmed but i mean we're in a desert and this is a sand shark and there are crazy animations in the game this would be the best place to show off your garchomp in my assumption again this is an assumption but there's a lot of pseudos in this game as you saw already uh so we're just placing that here this is my assumption but if you want 100 percent accurate pokemon predictions all these pokemon were shown off you have the hippowdon shown off in this screenshot here you have the obviously the black version in the shot which means you're gonna have the other ones and put the little babies here we have stojourner walking around again stojourner is also a version exclusive you can see that by this screenshot here we also have a dawn fans and fan fees as you can see in this image here this is a dawn fan battle screen we have our maractus our cactus pokemon chilling here and in our secret footage that we've talked about previously in our other video we were shown the crocodile line. They're crocodiles or desert crocs just surfing in the sand as well. So if we've got crocodiles, you gotta have your sand sharks, man. I'm telling you, I am betting on Garchomp being in this game. You can see that you get access to this area after you get through this town. As we go to the right area, I've thrown Skiddo and Go Goat here. There's a green pasture here facing a giant area. And you can see the Skiddo is right by this desert i took a screenshot and i made sure that screenshot was right with these rock formation behind it you can see the desert literally behind the skittle which kind of makes me think you're gonna bump into this pokemon in this area if you look to the right of it you can see these flags it's a darker flag so it most likely it is going to be a team star area these flags were a lot darker than the other one so this could be your dark type team star not too sure and then you're gonna go into this town and like i said this is where your desert's gonna be now going further to the left over here this is what i call the island areas you can see there's tons of pokemon here but i'm gonna explain how we get to that over here in this shot we have a pineco and its evolution and you can see that this is facing an island specifically in the background and that my friends refers to this another screenshot we have is this Breloom here facing this area. This is Cyclizer going after it. And here's another angle. And as you can see from that angle, you're going to be seeing the island background behind it. Here is a shot as I go around this border of Magikarp on the sand. And you can see that the water is very light blue. They really signify the island water versus the outside water. And this light blue indicates that this Magikarps are on the beach. We've also seen this in the Wiglet photo. There are Magikarps just floating on the beaches for no reason. We threw in here our Sawsbuck because this was shown at one of the overview trailer. And this is the different form of Sawsbuck and its baby form. You can also see that we have our slacking Vigorots and Slackots over here just chilling by the water. You don't see the baby form here, but you see the two evolutions that come afterwards hanging out by this little body of water. Over here, you can see the Pikachus 
sitting around this area. And I obviously put a Raichu here because Pikachu evolves into Raichu. Here is also a nice overview area of that. I just want to show you an overview area. Most likely looking out from this watchtower up here. You can kind of see the whole entire area. You can identify the types of trees they have here. Uh, going into the water, we have some water shots. You can see there's Gyarados here. You have Dratinis uh, in the shot. I added Dragonite into here because, you know, they evolved into Dragonite. And most likely there's a Raid Den that leads you to that Dragonite. There were some water Pokemon also confirmed via the Raid Dens and on the signs. We have Quillfish and Lumneon. I don't know exactly which body of water they were. So I just threw them in the ocean here for the heck of it. But they could be also in these bodies of water now over here you can see a caesar fighting a gold duck i added a lorantis and you could see lorantis in this screenshot here and i decided to put its baby evolution because most likely the babies are there we also have a really sick screenshot of slow pokes and slow bros walking around just chilling and we were kind of confirmed that slow king is also in the game so we don't have to think about any other missing pokemon right now hariyama is a great example of a pokemon that could drop king's rock which we've shown so that is most likely how you're going to be evolving your slow poke into slow king over here we have an image it's not as clear but this is an image of way coco fighting tropius and tropius is shown to be in this island area as you can see the water behind it. it's a little hard to see but it is pretty much there okay i don't think we've seen any proper images of what this area is i mean besides the overview from the tower here so i just threw our koala sleeping bear which was confirmed in this photo here and i threw our dunsparce here uh, j just because we've not seen them in the wild probably not accurate at all but this is the best spot i can put them for now now moving forward you'll notice there are a bunch a bunch of ghost pokemon in this area now the reason why we added the dragapult evolution line i kind of threw it here there's no actual screenshot of where it is in the game but again in this gita screenshot by the bookshelves you can see that there is the dreepy here i put it by this mountain uh this ice mountain we can see that ghost pokemon is going to be very prevalent in this picture of haunter and ghastly going up the snow mountain i threw oricorio the ghost version here because we are starting to be confirmed on a bunch of ghosts here we have the sinisty line also thrown here sinistee was shown in the main town in the school area we haven't seen it in the wild but the assumption is that it's going to be in this underlying area where the ghost pokemon do exist and the ghost pokemon surround this mountain most likely the lore is people die climbing this mountain i don't know there's probably something really dark about this whole thing here's a shot of sneasel over here by the mountain and we have a cerulege slicing the heck out of it cerulege by the way is a ghost evolution it's interesting that they chose to do this cerulege here we decided to throw sneasel's evolution weavile here as well i decided to put a sauce buck here in this photo because sauce buck have different appearances depending on the season they're in but most likely these saws bucks like you've seen already are based on the location they're in so this is probably where you're gonna find your snowy one on the left side of this map i threw a mischievous uh, they're most likely going to be by this rock path here as you can see in this screenshot and going all the way to this beach over here before we climb up we have a bunch of marinis we have a toxapex and we have shouters here and shouters obviously evolve into cloisters as you can see there's also a green lighthouse in this spot and there is a pink flag so this is another team star location again so maybe team star fairy over here now as we go up this ice mountain i want to point out a few pokemon that we can actually see you can see snovers and abomina snow in this screenshot over here you can see cryogonals in this screenshot here we have some titans walking around in this ice area you can also see some cub chews and bear tricks in this area now we weren't shown exactly where ice q is in this game but it is a version exclusive and my only assumption is it's a penguin with an ice head where on earth do you think that would be most likely by a body of water in the ice area that's the best i can do for where this pokemon is placed we also were shown snow runts and snow runt as you know can either become glalies or frost lasses and it's kind of cool again that frost Lass shares that ice ghost type which kind of gives you the idea that this mountain is really formed of ice type pokemon and ghost type pokemon and something cool about this mountain is that we have two gyms over here uh, and we were shown that we do have an ice type gym leader here which means the only assumption for me is that the other gym leader type is probably ghost type now based on everything else in the game i do not know what's in the middle again if there are any timestamps in this video that you would like to add on something or move a pokemon's location and i didn't do a good job please let me know thank you for watching and i'll see you guys in the next video